Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the class tonight. It's a pleasure to be with you this Friday. Next week is our last week and then only one more Monday. So one week and one day and we'll finish this module. So it's very important for you to move on on the platform. Also remember that you should be receiving the documentation so you can also apply to the department to check about that one. And as usual, we're going to start with the platform. So this is it. And uh, this is the class of tonight. Here is the question so you can participate on that one. And also this finished tonight. So only five uh, options, five questions. Uh, it's about the topic that we're going to check tonight. Okay. So we are going to check the um, attendance. Let's see. Present teacher. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso. Did you hear my present teacher? I'm sorry. David Samuel Gonzalez uh, Monterrosa. Mm, since there is Did you hear my present teacher? <laughs> Can you hear me? I cannot hear you. Hello, Hello? did you hear my present? Hello, can you hear me? Teacher. Can you hear you, teacher? Teacher. Yes, I can hear you now. Uh, yeah. Did you yes. hear my present? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I saw oh, that you okay. were here. And also David. Uh yes. let's see. Andres present is not here. Teacher, sorry, sorry. Ah uh, no, I haven't gone there yet. So I just <laughs> had three people, but I was not able to hear and I saw that you were speaking, so then I said something's going on, but I fixed it all right here in the computer. Okay, Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. Present. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejia. Present teacher. Good. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejia. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Good, perfect. Okay, my friends, so we're going to start the class of tonight. So uh, as you see there in the... Oh, hi, I got you. Very good. Let me just check here. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so um, yeah, we're gonna start checking about video conferencing. Remember that we were talking about presentation, and this unit was also for us to discuss about video conferencing and the advantages and disadvantages on that one. So let's check. We're gonna check a video that will be the first thing that we're going to do tonight. And at the end, please provide me with your comments about the video also please check the grammar the words the way that they speak uh, the way that they use certain things the structure of things that is very important okay so here we go we all know 2020 was the year of zoom and that line you're on mute you're on mute and 2021 isn't very different is it so it's no surprise that over the last several months, I've received quite a few requests on Zoom etiquette in English and what are effective phrases you can use to have a successful discussion on video conferencing platforms. So whether you've been tasked with leading a business meeting on a video conferencing platform, or maybe you've decided to organize a group of friends to listen to some English podcasts and then talk about them, and you're going to be using something like Zoom to do that, today's Confident English lesson is for you. If you don't already know, I'm Anne Marie with Speak Confident English. Everything I do is designed to help you get the confidence you want for your life and work in English. 
that definitely includes conversations on video conferencing platforms and making sure you know exactly what to say, no matter what happens. By the end of this confident English lesson today, not only will you have a better grasp of Zoom etiquette overall, but you'll also have essential phrases that will help you minimize technical issues, handle interruptions, and take control of any situation that may come up successfully. To help give us structure or a framework for this video today, we're going to look at seven different phases of a typical video conferencing meeting or different scenarios that may arise that require some effective phrases to help ensure smooth communication. So again, whether you're leading a business meeting or you're participating in an English conversation in a Zoom classroom, let's start first with what to do at the beginning to prepare for a successful discussion. Before you even get started, there are definitely steps you can take to help minimize the potential for technical disruptions during the conversation. If you're the one leading the discussion, of course you want to test the software, your microphone, your video, everything related to the video conferencing platform before the meeting starts. In addition to that, you should ask your participants to do the same. And there are two ways you can do that in a very polite way. First, you can send a simple quick email to all of the participants asking them to test the software, their video and microphone in advance, especially if this is their first time using the particular platform. One very easy sentence you can use in your email is something like, if you've never used this video platform before, we'll open the meeting room early so that you have time to test your microphone and your video before the meeting starts. Secondly, it's important to follow through with that and make sure that you're able to open the meeting five or 10 minutes early. Give your participants time to get set up. Rather than just having a blank screen while your participants join, you could create a slide or an image in advance and share that with your participants so that they see a note that says, we will start our meeting or we will start our discussion right on time. Please be sure to test your microphone and your video before the meeting starts. In addition to making sure everything technical is prepared for in advance, the second thing you can do in this phase is to review the agenda and share that in advance as well. If you have others who will be contributing to the discussion or that you know you will ask to share some key details, let them know in advance. Give them time to be prepared so that they can be concise and clear in the meeting. This same rule applies to any effective discussion. So before the meeting, make sure that you take time to consider what the key topics will be, who will be responsible for talking about those topics or giving updates, and what, if anything, will be expected from the participants. Are you expecting everyone to participate in the discussion? If so, let them know in advance. The next phase is your welcome and greeting phase plus introductions. Just like you would do in any professional environment, definitely start with a greeting, a quick hello, good morning, or good afternoon. If you're the host of the discussion and there are participants who are new to you, you should definitely introduce yourself at the beginning. The same is true for anyone who may be presenting, speaking, or contributing significantly to the discussion. Because it's important to get right to the agenda, you want to make sure that the introductions are quick and concise. So here are two simple formulas to help you do that. If you're hosting a professional meeting, you could use something like, Hi everyone, I'm Anne Marie, the director of Speak Confident English, and I'll be your host for the discussion today. Or, good morning everyone, I'm Lena. I'm a junior analyst at KPMG, and I'll be leading the discussion today. Do you notice in both of those, I'm including the name, the title or job position, and the organization where someone works. Now, if it's a more casual discussion, for example, a book club or a podcast listening club, you definitely want something more informal. So rather than focus on your professional background, you'll probably talk more about where you're from or some kind of a fun fact. Here are two quick examples. Hey everyone, I'm Anne Marie. I'm from DC and I joined this book club because I love mystery novels. Here's another one. Hi everyone, I'm Anne Marie. I'm from Washington DC and I love mystery novels. 
I've read everything by Agatha Christie. In both scenarios, after you finish your introduction, it's a great practice to end with something positive. You can keep it simple with something like, I'm happy to join you today, I'm looking forward to our discussion today, or I'm thrilled to be here. Now, if it makes sense for your particular meeting or discussion, you could ask every participant to introduce him or herself. When you do that, it's important to tell your participants what they should include in their introduction. It will help keep everyone concise. A great way to do that is with something like, there are some unfamiliar faces here today, so let's do a quick round of introductions. Then be sure to call on each individual person. This will ensure that the process of introductions flows smoothly. The third scenario in a typical online meeting is establishing ground rules to ensure smooth communication and to help minimize distractions. As the host or leader, not only do you want to demonstrate active listening skills, but you also want to encourage your participants to utilize active listening skills as well. Now, in an online meeting, active listening skills are a bit different. In face-to-face -face conversations, English speakers love using verbal cues to indicate active listening. You'll hear a lot of English speakers use things like, uh-huh, hmm, oh, that's interesting, right, uh-huh. These cues are fantastic in conversation, but they don't always work in an online platform. Sometimes they do, it depends on what you're using. But if everyone's on mute, or if there are too many people in the meeting to utilize verbal cues, you can also encourage your participants to use active body language and utilize other features of your video conferencing platform. For example, on Zoom, there are reactions that people can use to indicate a thumbs up, clapping their hands, or other emojis to indicate that they're in agreement or that they like what someone has said. These are all signs that someone is listening carefully and they're engaged in the discussion. If you want to encourage your participants to do something like that, here are a few statements you can use. If you have any questions during the meeting today, the easiest way to let me know is to use the raised hand emoji. And don't hesitate to let others know if you agree or like something that they said by using the clapping hand or a thumbs up. If you have any difficulties or need to leave early, please let us know by sending a quick message in the chat. By sharing all of this up front, you're establishing ground rules to help ensure smooth communication and minimizing potential disruptions. Now, just like an online meeting may not be the best place for verbal cues, it may not be the best place for using those reaction emojis either. If you're giving a presentation to hundreds of people, that might not be the best place to do that. So instead, you can encourage your participants to use visual cues or body language and facial expressions. If you see 100 faces on Zoom, but everybody's doing this. How would that make you feel as the speaker? It would definitely be uncomfortable. So encourage your participants to turn off other distractions and be focused on the speaker. Lastly, if you're hosting a meeting that is more of a discussion where you want participants to jump into the conversation, ask questions, share their ideas, tell them that that's what's expected. To do this, you want to encourage effective turn taking. What that means is that one person is allowed to speak, say everything that they need without interruption, and then it's the next person's turn to speak. You can encourage them to do that by using the raised hand emoji so you know who wants to contribute or asking individuals to share a comment in the chat so that you know they want to contribute. Whenever possible, it's best to avoid interrupting, but sometimes we need to do it. Now, I have a whole lesson on how to politely interrupt someone on English, but here are three quick ways to do that. With all of them, I recommend that you include some kind of a visual cue. We often use our body language to indicate that we're about to jump in. You'll see someone lean forward and maybe even put their hand up, something like this. So you might say, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I'd like to ask a quick question. Or, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'd like to add one more thing to what you said before we move on. A third example, I apologize for interrupting, but I wanna clarify something that you said. 
All right, so at this point you've prepared in advance. You've greeted or welcomed all of your participants. Maybe you've led some introductions and you've established effective ground rules to ensure there's clear communication and you're minimizing distractions. The fourth scenario is to practice effective time management. At the beginning, we talked about preparing in advance and providing the agenda. Doing that in advance will ensure a more effective discussion because everyone's ready to talk about the key issues. Time management also includes that turn taking that we talked about, making sure that your participants know how and when they can best contribute to the conversation. From time to time, individuals ask questions that take you away from the main discussion or get you off topic. And here's what you can say to manage this. That's a great question, but I want to make sure that we have time to get through our full agenda. So let's come back to it at the end today. Thanks for asking that question. I'll make sure that we save time at the end of our meeting today to answer any questions that are outside of the agenda. Similarly, you want to ensure that no one dominates the conversation or takes the conversation off track. If you notice that someone starts to do that, you can jump in and say something like, that's a really great idea, or that's a great suggestion. Hold on to that thought because I'd like to come back to it at the end of the discussion today. Or I appreciate your comment, Sue, that's a really good point. Let's see what others have to say on that. And lastly, if you know there's just a little bit of time left and you still have topics that you need to discuss on your agenda, you can say something like, we are almost at the end of the meeting, so let's try to get through the last three items. This will help everyone return their focus to the meeting agenda. The fifth scenario that you need to be prepared for is how to handle interruptions because they will happen. It might be a dog barking, someone at the door knocking, a baby crying, construction outside your window, or some unexpected technical issue. When any of those things happen, here are some ways to handle it. I'm so sorry, you'll have to forgive the noise in the background. Could you come back to me in a moment? I need to put myself on mute for a second. If someone interrupts you, you can respond with, sorry, let me finish my thought and then you can go ahead. Or, one moment please, I'd like to mention one more thing before we move on. Sometimes interruptions are caused by technical issues that are completely out of our control, and we may even lose the ability to stay connected to the online meeting. In those situations, it is always a good practice to let everyone know what's happening. You can send a message in the chat to let everyone know you're having a technical difficulty, or if necessary, send an email. When you do that, always let them know what you plan to do going ahead. If you're a participant, you can let the host know that you'll review the notes. If you're the host or the leader, you can let them know when you will try to reschedule the meeting. The sixth common scenario for an online meeting is asking other people to wait while you do something. For example, if you're the host of the meeting, or in my case, if you're the teacher, and you want to share your screen or you have a presentation that you want to share, you'll often use phrases like, bear with me for a moment. I seem to have lost my presentation slides. Please wait for a moment while I get ready to share my slides. I apologize for the wait. Please give me a moment so that I can share my screen. Then when others have waited, make sure to thank them for their patience. And you can simply say, thank you so much for waiting or thanks for your patience. And finally, to bring a close to effective Zoom etiquette and must have phrases is end your meeting or your discussion on a high note. What that means is to end with something positive. If you're the host of the meeting, you can end by providing a quick summary or highlighting the key takeaways. You can do that with a sentence starter like, let's go over the priorities. To summarize, we will, and then give your action steps to quickly recap, and then again, give your key takeaways or the key points. After you've done that, you can thank everyone for their time with something simple like, we got a lot done today. Thank you so much for your time and patience. Or thanks everyone for coming. This was a fascinating discussion. And finally, just like you started with a typical greeting you would use in any situation, you can also end with a goodbye. For example, I hope you all have a great weekend. I'll see you next week or have a great day, everyone. And with that, you have over 30 must-have phrases for effective online meetings in English. 
Before we finish, I'd love to hear from you. If you've hosted, led, or participated in an online meeting, is there a phrase that you always use that I didn't mention today? If there is, I'd love to know, and you can share it with me in the comment section below. If you found... Okay, so what did you get from this video? Any comments? Okay, a lot of information, important information, but uh, we need to know about the etiquette. It is important uh, how to start, how to handle, because uh, all of this uh, situation can happen, and we be uh, prepared for for handle that, that kind of situations. And how to end is uh, very important too, because in the uh, depression or for in the whole reef for for end we can forget something and it's important it's important to take the control to manage the time and to be a active listener and, and promote that all the people in the conference will be active listeners too so a lot of information teacher good information very good, perfect. Yes, there are many things that might happen whenever you're presenting. And of course, you know that it's not the same when we are there in, with the people, right, in a person uh, than when we are in a video conference. Many other things might happen. So very good. Any other comments or opinions? On... Yes, I realize that every week, every Wednesday in my company, we have a meeting that everybody, everybody must be there. So uh, it's a submitting. Uh, they were realizing this on streaming and that helped a lot because just the ones hosting had access to talk, but now they switched to Zoom and it's very, very annoying to hear every since, every, please everybody mute, please everybody, because there are people that, I don't know if they don't care or they don't see the importance of the, the meeting. We are like around people from four or five countries reunited in that meeting. And they follow this structure that she, uh, this structure at the end, they they um, finish the meeting with a positive thought. There is uh, most of the time a director, the one saying the last words. And, and they are like, wow, every every meeting is like, you are waiting, who's going to talk at the end today? Because they are looking for, wow, an information that it, it marked your week, let's say in, a, in that way. But they followed this structure, this structure, and I didn't realize it. And I was, I was so get used to, to those meetings, but now I'm realizing that it takes a lot of effort to, to make all these uh, structured. Unfortunately, there are people that always is talking and they don't unmute their their telephone. Uh, I don't know if because if because of the system or computers we use, but that is the only thing annoying that uh, they need to add add some advertisement mute. That is the annoying thing, but it's very important to to uh, follow that structure because the information is clear. And you, we you, we get we we used to have those meetings in one hour. Now following the structure because I noticed they change it in, in this way. Now we just uh, in that meeting thirty to thirty five minutes every Wednesday. But it's very important. Very good, perfect. Thank you. So that is true. And uh, yeah, until we are the ones who are going to deliver the presentation is when we realize about everything mm -hmm. that you need to do, right? Um, sometimes we go to the meetings or we see the graphics or we uh, mm -hmm. check some information and we are like, oh, okay, that is fine. But yeah, sometimes it takes a lot of, of mm -hmm. effort to bring the information, the correct information. And the least that we expect is that people are interested, right? And, and participate mm -hmm. and they are in, in, involved in all the things. Very good. Uh, perfect. Thank you, Ana Claudia. Any other comments or opinion on the video? Okay. And uh, yeah, we were saying that it's 
kind of different, right? To be uh, presenting there in a uh, presential world uh, or in a video conference. Definitely there are different challenges and there are different things that we need to consider, right? For example, here technology is something that we need to consider. Noise, as she say, or sometimes, I mean, it's impossible that something is going to happen there. So there are many things that we need co to consider. And there are advantages and disadvantages of that one. So we're going to read a little bit about the benefits of the use of the video conferencing. So whether your business has remote workers, offices in multiple cities, or teams of professionals who travel often, video conference is key to keeping everyone on the same page. So, and, and we're gonna start reading and commenting on this one. David, could you please read the first one? Okay, what is video conferencing? Video conference is an online meeting between two or more participants communicating in real time over an internet connection. It blends audio and video to create a virtual face-to-face -face conversation when you can see all their expressions while hearing what they are saying, whether they are using a laptop, mobile device, or conference room meeting webcam. With the power to bring people together, simplify collaboration, improve efficiency, and help you save money, provides advantage for business of any size. Good, what did you get on this one? That is the introduction. Well, it's important because it's the, a definition of what is a video conference in there. It may be became a thing uh, that is uh, simple, but it is important to have a, a definition. What is what is a video conference? Uh, we need to know it's a, an online meeting, it's important online meeting, it's a, and uh, in real time, real time, synchronic time. Uh, the, the, the possibility to say face to face uh, is uh, definitely is an, a new environment that uh, uh, will stay with us for uh, now and on. We will be using video conference. I, I don't think so. It will be omitted in the future. I, I think it will be increasing in the future. See? So that uh, we have uh, this with us from now on. It's important. Very good. So that is true. I don't think this is going to decrease. Maybe in the in the past, a lot of companies they did that one, but because of different needs. I mean, that is us, right? I mean, sometimes there are people that work from home or people that travel very often, or there are people in different uh, cities. So you need to get meetings with them. But nowadays, this is very common. So in the, probably in the future, it's going to be the most common thing, not the presential world, but this one. And there are many things. I mean, for example, there are people, there are companies that they invest in actual uh, hardware for that one. So they invest in equipment that is exactly for that one. Have you ever seen those things? Like, for example, Google has like a, a video meeting conference thing that uh, when you turn it on, the camera goes up and then she sees you and it's going to, I mean, it's very, very good and it's very expensive. So um, there are a lot of resources for this one. And nowadays it's easy. I mean, you just need to download the, a software and then have a camera and a microphone and that's it, right? Good internet connection. So very good. So there are 10 reasons to use video conferencing. If you haven't already adopted video conferencing, you're probably thinking about it as you weigh your options and decide whether it's right for you. Let's take a look at 10 advantages of video conferencing. So number one is for Ana Claudia. Okay, improves communication. Whether you're a small business owner or part of a large company, clear communication is clear to understanding projects. Setting expectations and meetings, your goals, video conference can help. Uh, video conference can help. A report by force tell us that humans process visual far faster and more uh, updated than text or audio. 
and, and let me just make sure that I'm just one moment. Okay, <laughs> I'm going, <laughs> okay, I'm, going, I'm near to my computer now. Okay, I'm okay. sorry. And relative to audio conferences, conferencing 62% of executives agrees that video conferencing significantly improves the quality of communication. In addition, 50% of those surveyed believe video conferencing also improves the degree of understanding with the ability to maintain a visual on other people in the meeting. Uh, participants will be more engaged, multitask less, and set themselves up to process and understanding more clearly. Mm. Okay, the, last part for, mm, the last part for multitasking less, no. <laughs> <laughs> because I think that people, me also, I do it. I take advantage while we are in a, a conference meetings or uh -huh. and I take take advantage to because I have I work with two screens. So in one screen is the, the meeting and I'm working on the other side. I don't know what how real is this, unless that we must have the 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 um the the screen, the camera on, maybe that works. But if we have the camera off, no. That's a lie. We, we are doing other things. And let's see. On the other side, it says human process visual far faster. Yeah, it is right. And I, I think that uh, the video conferences helps to focus what to, to focus on what the host or leader want to make sure we understand because they are able to use uh, different resources, video, photos, uh, interviews. So I agree in that part that yes, it's uh, better to view on your screen uh, a presentation because just you are looking at on that or watching that instead of being on a conference room, uh, seeing other move, others moving or drinking a glass of water, hearing other noises, etc. Okay. Yeah. Very good, perfect. So yes, there are many ways in which video conference can improve communication. So uh, yes, it's, I mean, you are going to be comfortable, but you are going to be only watching at the screen and interacting mm -hmm. just with one object at a time. So that is definitely something that is going to help you paying attention in a different way. Good, helps build relationships. Number two, uh, Ramon Mata, is it possible for you? Not possible. Jessica Gennari. Not either. Uh, Dora Elizabeth. Helps building relationship. When you meet face to face, you can make a personal connection, pick up a verbal and nonverbal quest, and begin to build trust. And while there are maybe critical connections that you'll need to travel for, video conferences can help bright the gaps for all other meetings. While still helping you connect on a personal level with customers, teams, mates, and the met workers alike. For this aesthetic among us, <clears throat> research shows that video conferencing is widely regarded as a outsource tool and helps people build relationships inside and outside their companies. <clears throat> okay, good. What do you get on that one? Uh, the video conferences helps uh, meet other persons uh, out of the circle, near circle of the person. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a form, uh, the connection with, or, uh, with a, a customer or or the personal of other companies. 
it's more easy and fast. Okay, very good. So that is true. It's easier and it's faster, right? So, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be very easy if you are in the office or working from home, you just go to the calendar and then you send the invitation. If the other person accepts, then you know that at that time you just click on that one and then you need to go in that one. So you can have meetings with a lot of people and you don't have to move to other building or to look for a room for you to have the um, the, uh, the meeting. So that is a very good thing. Good, saves money, that is number three. Uh, Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay. Uh, by giving your team a simple way to meet face-to-face, -face, video conferencing delivers a collaborative, collaborative in person experience without the expense of travel. That means no airfare required for training, conference, big meetings, and all gatherings in between. So you can focus precious resources elsewhere. Plus, with the power to meet virtually, you can hire the best talent and allow them to work anywhere. And once you get comfortable with the technology, it may even inspire you to expand your remote workforce. Workforce, so you can bring up top talent no matter where they live and gain an advantage over your competition. A comp comprehensive solution like Microsoft Teams provides video, audio, chat, screen sharing, recording, and more under a singular single UI. This helps to avoid juggling multiple vendors or wasting valuable time switching between services or through sharing issues. Very good, perfect. What did you get on that? Uh, this uh, is, oh, no, it's, it's, it's very common. If you know, after pandemic, uh, this is a reality in our, uh, uh, our world, maybe in different countries. Uh, when when you now uh, I I don't know but I I know uh, some coworkers that are they have everyday meetings online um when uh, the the companies save money because they don't need infra infrastructure they don't they don't need uh, maybe they don't waste time to uh, move to a place to another place because a meeting they can do it uh, in anywhere, anytime. So that is very important. And like the, the powerful set, uh, you, you, uh, everywhere where you are, you can uh, hire different people with different talents in everywhere. And that is very important because sometimes uh, you need uh, maybe a, an especially that maybe you can, you can find it in, in your country, uh, when in, in another country, maybe it's very common and you can uh, hire a, a person and you, you say, you say uh, in, in equipment, you say in maybe on, on a building that, that you have to provide to workers to, to, to work, they, they prefer that, that kind of work, that's it. Okay, very good, perfect. So definitely it's going to be convenient, right? More convenient. And you say something very interesting. Sometimes you are looking for an expert to provide a training or to have a meaning to solve a problem. Uh, and I mean, it's easier for you just to connect into the computer and uh, just pay for the training, but not for a hotel or a, um, a travel trip, or things like that one. So it definitely it's going to be uh, very convenient. Number four, saves time. Jose Rivas. Okay. Let's see. Okay, because, because you can meet virtually anywhere. The conferencing technology allows you to, to save travel time so you can spend less time getting to meetings and more time focused on more pressing work, 
but it can also help you save time in other ways by hosting a, a meeting rather, uh, rather, sorry, rather than working uh, through an issue be, by email, and it can eliminate the this disruption or a barrage of messages, messages, messages. reduce, sorry? Messages. Messages, sorry. Reduce confusion and the need for lengthy discussions and get your term aligned faster, helping to reduce the amount of time it takes to complete projects or tasks. Okay, what do you get on this one? That's you. Uh, okay, so, so that uh, meetings are virtually, virtually, so we can save like actually time. So just to send the, the link, so and the time, not in that, so that we can uh, join to the meeting. So it will be better. So and actually, so in order to, to unmute, or to put mute for everybody. So that, that helped a lot too for some interactions or some backgrounds. Sometimes it's really annoying. Okay. So that's it. Very good, perfect. So yes, it doesn't not only saves money, but also time. I mean, as I was telling you, uh, you are not going to travel. You're not going to take a plane. You're not going to take a bus. You don't have to go. Even in the same building, sometimes it's difficult, right? Because, yeah, you are working and then you have to go to other floor and take the elevator. And then, uh, I mean, people are not coming because they were in another meeting. It's, it's difficult sometimes whenever you want to do it that in person. But when you this, uh, do this uh, through a conferencing, it's going to be convenient because of that. You just send the link, you organize yourself. I mean, even you can chat and say to the other people, I, I'm, I will be there in five minutes. Just give me one, five minutes, okay? So uh, it's going to be very convenient. And you just click on the link and move on, right? Good, the other one says streamlines collaboration. So that is going to be for Iriana Giselle. Okay, teacher, uh, streamlines and collaboration. The best video conferencing technology delivers more benefits than just a way to see and hear your team. It offers features like screen sharing and real-time document editing. So it's easy for everyone to examine the files they need, contribute to the discussion, and create a culture of across your business with an engaged workforce working together, whether they're in the office, on the road, sometimes remote or always at home. You make faster, more informed decisions with input from across locations and time, um, I can see, I don't know, uh, and time zones. Zones, yeah. Very good, so what do you get on that one? Mm. Hmm. that uh, video conferencing has a lot of benefits, not just um, like to face-to-face, -face just can permit have face-to-face -face meetings with people. You can also um, have, for example, um, this thing about real culture, it happens nowadays actually during the pandemic and after the pandemic, as you said, uh, video conferencing becomes like, um, a very popular way to, to have meetings with your team. Actually, you can uh, have a meeting with uh, people from another country and it's okay and it's faster and it's a good way to, like we'll, we saw in the, in the points before, where you can save money, time, and a lot of resources. And this part of the engaged workforce is very important because you can invest or 
you can you maybe you want to teach to to your team this kind of of or tool if we can call it that but if your workforce is not engaged uh, um the enough like the enough engage with with this um maybe the result uh, at the end isn't going to be like like you want but if your workforce it has the enough engage i think that the result will be better okay very good so yeah i mean uh, it's going to <laughs> you will be able to connect with a lot of people you will be able to share documents to or actually do some screenshot and create your own presentation about this one record the video conferencing so you can share that with other people in the future so there are many things that you can do here uh, so you can collaborate with people not only uh, in the present but also for the future so that is a very good thing good improves efficiency that is going to be for uh, Jose Wilfredo Ayala. Not possible, okay. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa. Not possible either. Let's see, uh, William Ramirez. Okay. Okay. Improves efficiency. Yep. Um, clearer communication by way of verbal and non-verbal cues, screen sharing, real-time collaboration, and ability to join from virtually anywhere, makes video conferencing a more efficient use of everyone's time. Ending minutes at established time also helps keep people and time on topic. And best of all, video conferencing is uh, flexible, flexible uh, you want it to be. So it's easy to quickly jump into a brainstorm, answer a customer question, start a spontaneous virtual huddle, or set up a regular check-in. Uh, okay. In this case, improved efficiency is like, uh, you can do this uh, virtually. Uh, instead, you can, um, the typical meeting face-to-face. Uh, -face. So it's e efficiency and in the way that um, you can answer, you can have an answer uh, quickly and you can share a lot of information, documents and a lot of things. I mean, uh, it is like the the physical meet meeting, but in virtual. Okay, so definitely, so it's going to make that. Uh, I mean, everyone is going to have more time, and you will be able to to invest your time wisely. So you will be able to invest your time good for other things. As we said before, I mean, I need to go to another room or another building or to another branch uh, that is uh, time consuming. Here, you are doing something, a report, and then you stop that and move to the meeting, do the meeting, and then you can then in the, the place where you are, you can continue working. So definitely the time is going to be more efficiently used for everybody. Good. Uh, next one is going to be for Erwin. Increases productivity. Erwin Lagos, is it here? Not here. Okay, I have a person here that says administrator. I don't know who that person is. Who might be it? Sorry, teacher, is my other device. I, ah, okay. I, I no worries. <laughs> I was, I was, I was just wondering. No worries. Okay. So let's see. Uh, number seven, uh, Jarvin Isaac Guevara. Okay. Number seven, increase productivity. Because video conference make easier collaborate and documents in real time, you won't have the content with long email chains. 
lost message in document in documents comments and vision control issues and all which can you confusion and misunderstanding and delays by having the power to help on call to collaborate in real time in real time you can ensure everyone has a voice all feedback gets incorporated and question and ask were immediate and you can quickly garner a team make you sure that everyone understand the project before leaving the meeting. Plus, because video conference eliminate the need to the trouble. You think can devoid more time to more important work and life matter, even a day when they have meetings. This is how the modern workforce good rather work with more flexibility, modally and tie back in their PC day. Good, what do you get on that one? Oh, this is to totally true because for example, in the real life, I have meeting for production every single Tuesday. And it's so good because everyone that is involved in the process, we are checking the problem and we solving it, that meeting. And after that, it's easier to, to follow that. Make okay. make the, the have a have a that that kind of meaning make easier the, the the communication and the and the give the priority the thing that is needed for. Okay, very good. So that is so true. I mean, uh, yes, it's going to it's going to give you exactly what you need. And I mean, we are used to that one now, right? So it's going to be for everybody's going to get more productivity. So that will be definitely true. Number eight, makes scheduling meetings easier. That is for Heidi. Okay, teacher. Makes scheduling meetings easier. If members of your team travel regularly, the scheduling meeting can be a challenge. But, but with video conferencing, they can join in from practically anywhere, including taxi, taxis, hotel rooms, airports, their home offices, and more. And because they can do it using almost any device, scheduling face-to-face -face meeting and keeping everyone up to date is easier. With more manageable calendars and control of how their workday flows, teams can spend more time pursuing opportunities for business growth and remove workers are easier to engage and retain. Good, what do you get on that one? Definitely, it's so easy to connect with so many devices from your PC, from your phone, from your tablet, from your, your, your computer and uh, I mean, it is easier to connect from home, from anywhere, from anywhere. It is so easy to, to have this meeting. You don't have to move anywhere. You can connect from the place you are and it makes makes it more easy, definitely. Okay, that, that is so true. I mean, even with the devices, it's going to be very easy. I mean, uh, companies, they try to get software or platforms that are very easy to download or install or to use it online and uh, yeah just go to the calendar set the link there and that's it I mean you will be able just to enter a ping number and a phone number or just to click on the link and that's it so it's going to be very convenient very nice and very secure because of that one right all right perfect thank you number nine creates consistent accurate records Fernando Gonzalez Not possible, okay? Uh, Roxana Asensio. Not possible either. Boy, uh, boy, I'm here. <laughs> okay, okay, very good, go ahead. Uh, let me see. Create consistent, accurate records. When you has, when you has an in-person meeting or an audience, audio only call taking notes usually falls to someone on your team 
and give the fast pace of conversation. The tails can easily fall through the crack, but with video confer conferencing technology, that also helps helps you securely. Securely. Securely, thank you. Securely records and trans transcribe. You can keep all the details. You can, I'm sorry, you can keep all the details intact. Not only that, but you can refer back to them when question arise and share the session with those who couldn't attend, which makes it easy to set everyone up for success. Okay, what do you get on that one? Um, well, when you, it's, in general, it's, it's easier when you uh, use, uh, using the video conferencing uh, technology because you can use extra, um, uh, extra material for a uh, pres presentation or a graphic or something like that to, to share your ideas. And it's important because um, maybe when you are just in a call, it's more complex try to transmit your ideas. But if you are showing in a presentation and in your video conferences, it's maybe the audience can get better the idea. And you can... Um, uh, maybe you can at the end of the of the of the video conference you can get um, like a little uh, minuta. How do you say minuta? A minute, actually, that is minute. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, just take some uh, the important points to try to help to the audience to to get the main idea of the video conference. But in general, it's easier because you can transmit easier your ideas than when you are using just a call or another, uh, maybe a, a email. It's really complex when you try to uh, describe in a call with a, without images or in a, in a mail, for example, because you just spend a lot of um, words. And maybe the main idea lost when you try to talk a lot or when you try to describe a lot. So it's easier when you uh, using video conference technology because uh, you can share graphic or present a little presentation and just explain. Very good. Actually, this is something very nice and it's one of the most important advantages. I mean, when we go to a, a regular meeting in person and we discuss things and we agree on certain things, sometimes, I mean, there are people that maybe they didn't understand very well, they didn't pay attention, or it's, it's simply, uh, mm -hmm a way of human beings that whenever we transmit something, we do not transmit sometimes the message in a correct way, accurately, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you have a record of the video conferencing, you just can go in there and, and review, right? And say, oh, okay, this is what they say. And it's going to be very accurate. I mean, it's not possible to get a mistake on that one. Good, yeah. perfect, thank you. So now the last one here says, uh, enables live events. Suleyma Yvonne. Not possible. Let's see uh, Marcus Ella. Not possible either. Uh, let's see who else is missing. Everybody has read right. Roberto Luis Umaña. Francisco Eduardo. 
Okay. Okay, it seems that we need to repeat. So, David, could you please help me with number 10? Of course, teacher. Enables live events. Live or live? Live. Live events. Live events, okay. Whether you want to connect with your entire, ta entire team, your complete client roster or the public video conferencing tools can help. With the power to share your message visually, these tools give you the ability to host panel discussions, webinars, product launch, launches, and more for audience in your office or around the world. Okay, what do you get on that one? Okay, we can do a, a presentation that maybe uh, we need to, to rent a, a hotel room or uh, to, nail a, to, to rent a, a special place. You can do it online. You can give uh, the expectation, you can give the, the uh, importance, the promotion, and you can, uh, uh, there are, uh, uh, tools that uh, give you the opportunity to do it in in uh, YouTube, in Facebook, in uh, I don't know Instagram. In uh, you can connect many many uh, apps and uh, get uh, to more people, and you can uh, get chat in in YouTube, get chat in Facebook, and get connected with with many, many people, many more people that, uh, that uh, you have in a, in a room maybe. And uh, it is uh, important. Uh, obviously you need to have a, 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 a like account that you pay for <laughs> to get uh, more people. But uh, even though it's uh, cheaper and uh, doing in a special place, I think. Very good, so that is true. I mean, definitely. Uh, you can have a lot of people in this kind of meetings, depending on the platform. And of course, as you say, depending on um, which plan do they pay for, right? But I mean, if uh, even when they pay for the platform and the plans is going to be cheaper, more convenient. Everybody will will listen very clear. Everybody will be able to see very clear everything. So, because for example, when you are in a large video conference uh, that is in person, I mean, sometimes you are there in the back, and or the or the sound, I mean, is not good, and you are not able to listen very well. But here, yes, I mean, uh, you will be able to to be there in front in, in the first place, right? Okay, so of course, we're not going to check about Microsoft Teams video conferences, <laughs> but this is something very, very good, okay? Before we continue, we are going to, uh, as usual, we're gonna check the attendance. Let's see how it goes. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Nothing, teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose teacher, Osmin. I'm here, sorry. Uh, okay, I'm going to. Jose Osmin Thank Rivas you. Navas. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present, sorry. Present. Okay, Present. good. Okay, Present. good. Good, got it. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. 
Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. I'm here. Good. Sulema Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Very good, perfect. So let's continue. Uh, we will continue discussing about this topic and we're gonna start the second part with a little video that is like a parody on what might happen in a, in a video conference. So here we go, my friends. Trip Crosby has joined the meeting. Beth has joined the meeting. Hello? Tyler? No, this is Beth from ICS. Oh, hey, Beth. Thanks. How are you doing? Uh, oh, good, yeah. Just making it, you know. Tyler? Has joined the meeting. All right, well, uh, this is Trip. Who's here? Tyler's here. Beth's here. Okay, the purpose of today's meeting is to discuss the yeah, I'll be able to do it in like 30 minutes. John? Has joined the meeting. Hi, John. Hi. I was just trying to go over the purpose of today's meeting, which is to discuss the deliver... Tyler? Has joined the meeting. <sighs> Sorry, guys, I got cut off. Is Paul here? Send him in by. Put in your access code. No, 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 that's your PIN number. It should be a nine-digit number. Try pressing the pound key. Paul. Has joined the meeting. Any questions before we move on? Yes, this is Beth. What's our best plan of attack for the second quarter? Question actually. What we should do. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, I think well, what we should do it is. It actually really depends on it. how you look at no, it because the really come. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think Given what sales, we, we're at really, a think, Let me just say that. Okay. That's a great graph, John. Uh, Tyler? Well, my main concern with the projections from last year was that they're just insufficient. I mean, they're not even taking into account. Did we, uh, did we lose Tyler again? Hello? John, are you guys taking distributions? John? Oh, my bad. I was on mute. Um, let, me, let me start over. So I've prepared a presentation. I'm sharing it with all of you. You should be able to see it on your screen right now. Got it. I don't see a link anywhere. It says I need to download a plugin. We are all using Macs, I'm assuming. Yeah. 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 How can you? Of course. Um, Financials are looking great. Paul, do you have any comments on staffing? I was thinking about that because we get a few more contractors. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry. Rex, get down. I don't know. I, I feel like when I look at the numbers last year, that so if we want to really tighten that up, then I don't well, think to me, uh, staffing, staffing is, is a huge impact. Is that, is that me? Is that me? It's not me, I don't think. I, don't think. I just want to go over a couple of details as we move into our next section here. Um, we got three new departments coming on. We're breaking up a little bit, guys. By the end of Q3. Driving to so a dead spot. I need spot. everyone to give me detailed evaluations each Sorry, month guys. so that we know. That's it, guys. Beth, you'll send out a recap email that could have basically taking the place of this whole meeting, correct? Yep, always do. Yeah, thanks for doing that, Beth. Dave, you've been here the whole time? Yeah. Huh. Well, thanks everyone once again. Oh, one more. Th <laughs> okay, what do you get from this one? <laughs> a real <laughs> meeting. That's a real one. <laughs> that uh, I was wondering because it's exactly what it is. Yeah, that that happens. I mean, as we say, there are advantages and disadvantages, right? So, which one do you remember here? What happened here in this meeting? Okay, the, the not only not not all the guys were, were on time. Who used to write later was interrupted the, the the meeting, and just as happened because of the bell sound that. Uh, uh, giving you the signal that somebody is connected and, and uh, uh, the, 
the mute people that uh, was talking, but uh, nobody listening. And the, when you lost connection, when you lost connection, you, you go out and, and the dog barking. Uh, the, 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 the one is missing was the, the guy with this selling bread. <laughs> the <click> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, but uh, all of the things that happened, yes. Okay, very good, perfect. So, uh, yes, I mean, this was very funny. I was looking for something like that one, and, and actually I was able to find it sometimes. I'm not able to find exactly what I want to show you, but this is exactly what happens sometimes in video conference, right? I mean, interruptions, people, they don't pay attention. They are speaking on mute. Um, many things happens in video conference so uh, yes there are things that are challenged and we need to be aware sometimes there are things that we cannot do anything about like the the noise right so uh, people they don't pay attention I mean, there was a girl that was playing cards there so uh, of course she was in a different world right at the end there was another guy that i mean he was there and we never knew that he was there right um yeah the breaking or the internet connection that sometimes push you out and then you have to come back and many things so there are a lot of challenges and of course we need to be aware on those okay any other comment on the video okay so these are 11 video presentation tips to keep your audience engaged nice so Let's start with the introduction. Uh, Jessica Yanari, is it possible for you to read? Not possible. Uh, Dora Elizabeth. Video presentation is tall. Being confident, keeping an audience focused, and keeping engaging content are hard things to do in person let alone virtually, Com virtually. So, huh. okay. companies are relying or virtual presentations now more than ever before and that can be a change but with the right period presentation tips you and your team can create effectively periods presentation that's connect you to do your audience and provide the, them with something of value. Our team, our team at Bomb Bomb knows I think our two about but is take to hot a successful online video video conferences. In fact, Alicia Berruti, Bomb Bomb. National speaker and Kevin Andrew, bomb bomb client enablement manager, are regularly on camera presentation to hundreds, sometimes even thousands of people. Keep reading for their favorite tips for making a video conference that will help your team connect and engage their audience for start to finish. Okay, very good. What do you get on this one? And in, for video conference, is a is a in increase the the use the companies in the companies uh, prepare or, or the the personal companies prepare the or train for video video conferences. Okay, so that mm -hmm. is true. I mean, it's a challenge as we checked on the video. Yeah, sometimes it can be uh, very difficult, but if we do certain things, we're going to not only provide a nice presentation, but also uh, to engage people that are there watching us. So that will be it. So video presentation tips for live presentation is not secret that live virtual presentations come with a unique set of challenges putting together an engaging presentation that effectively reaches an audience while interacting with them from behind a screen can be difficult without the right techniques. So what are some ways to make a virtual live presentation engaging and effective? 
That is the question. And here are some tips for that one. So number one, consider value first. Uh, that is going to be for Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay. Uh, when learning how to make a video presentation, Alicia says, it's important to consider the value you want to provide first. What do you want your audience to know? Is your goal to help with a problem? Are you trying to teach them something? Start with that you want to accomplish and then work backward. This will help your video presentation provide the value you intend, intended to. Okay, what did you get on this one? Uh, it's the same that we was discussing. We were discussing maybe the last the last week, or last maybe two weeks ago, when we are we were uh, talking about the how to prepare a video presentation. The, the important that is uh, to to have a, a good structure, and you have to be, you have to to have the, the your your goal, your objective. Uh, and you have to prepare a good presentation. In this paragraph, they recommend you uh, ask you that question, those questions to help to help you to to help. Uh, how what what is the what you want to to get uh, and what you want to to present to the audience. Very good. So I believe this is one of the most important things. I mean, uh, consider what you are going to present and that is going to really impact people. I mean, they are there for because they really want to get some information or, or uh, provide an opinion, anything like that. So that is very important to provide a real topic that they will be, uh, that it will be valuable for, for everybody. Nice. Okay, number two, engage your audience. Uh, we're going to split this in two because it's kind of large. So the first part is going to be for uh, Jose Wilfredo Ayala. Not possible. Ileana Giselle. Yes, teacher. Okay. Engage your audience. It can be challenging for your team to go. Gauche. How do you pronounce that word? Gauche. Gauche. Okay. Mm -hmm. To gauche audience, interest while live streaming when they aren't face to face with them. When you present in person, you can see people laugh at your jokes, not, not in understanding, and take notes. Virtually, it's hard to feel the same level of connection. Both, Alicia and Kevin say engaging your audience virtually just as important as it is in person. They aim to do this during every presentation, even if the connection isn't the same for them. So what are some ways to create connection and ensure audience members stay focused throughout the presentation? Bring back focus with engaging phrases. Use phrases such as, you're really going to want to listen to this, or pay attention to what I say next, it's really important. These phrases grab attention and put the focus on what's coming up next. Get personal. Everyone likes a great story. Create an emotional connection by sharing stories and anecdotes. Just because presenters can't see the reaction doesn't mean the audience doesn't feel a sense of connection. And because they feel this connection, the audience is more likely to stay engaged. Okay, until that. So what do you get on this? That, uh, yeah, at the end it could be difficult or like more difficult to, to catch the attention of your audience if you don't have like face-to-face, -face, but... Uh, like in the same room, for example. But there are some techniques or ways that you can connect with the people. And very agree with the part, this part of the bring back focus with engaging phrases. Because um, it happens to me that maybe we have a meeting, for example, just for example, at the office, if, uh, be at Teams. And um, 
someone said said to okay uh, please pay attention to the to the next point because it's important and like automatically your brain is like oh this is important so very i agree with this part that i think that can um can work in both so when you are uh, like in a meeting but in the same room with with your team or virtually i think that this tool or this i don't know this strategy or this advice can result in both scenarios okay very good so you are so right i mean these are very similar to the ones that uh, we checked whenever we were presenting or talking about presenting or creating a presentation. So, uh, yes, it's something that we need to consider and it doesn't matter. I mean, maybe the strategy itself is going to be kind of different whenever we are doing this in person than the ones that we're doing uh, in a video conference. But at the end, yes, we need to engage. We need to use certain words, stories. They are very good and they uh, always bring the attention of people so and there are a few more so two more francisco eduardo could you please help me with the other two not possible roberto luis umaña william ramirez okay which one teacher it will be uh build this one, build and reflective moments and use names. Okay. Uh, build and reflect, reflective moments. Ask viewers to consider something specific. For example, think about three questions you receive every day that you can answer using video. After a brief silence, they are able to refocus. Use, use names, get the audience, the audience engage and use the names you see in the chat or their screens throughout the presentation. Using names establishes familiarity and fosters genuine connections. Good. What do you get on that one? Uh, you have to be, um, uh, for example, connect with the, the audience or in this way, uh, you, uh, as we do, for example, here, uh, you can uh, refer to someone like the name, uh, what is in the, the, uh, in the app and uh, what else? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so that is it, I mean, uh... The reflective moments are very important because it's something that you will be able to get their attention and check what they're thinking or what is their opinion about something. So, and of course, use names is very important because if you say you, the one that is on the back, I mean, that is not professional, right? That is not going to help in any situation, actually. Okay, number three, use chat moderator, uh, Ana Claudia. Okay, use the chat moderator, trying to fill questions and comments or solve tech problems while presenting live can disrupt the entire presentation. Starting and stopping to address every individual audience member's questions or concerns make it difficult to keep a presentation on track. Having a moderator in the chat is the key to interacting with the audience while still delivering a smooth presentation. A moderator can filter through the chat and find applicable content to pass on to the presenter without creating unnecessary disruptions. Okay, what do you get in this? Yes, uh, very helpful. And I face uh, trouble once in on a meeting i was using zoom platform i'm not get i'm just using zoom platform with these classes and then i'm i get i use more the the google meet i'm get used to it and i get in trouble with uh, this application using the tablet 
And in fact, was very helpful to have someone. We were told at the beginning of the meeting that in case any issue happened, we must refer direct to this and this person. And that was very helpful because we didn't interrupt the, the, the meeting. And yes, it helps a lot. They, they can find, they are prepared uh, for all these type of things. Okay, very good. So yes, I mean, uh, that is something that is going to help you. Somebody mm -hmm. that is going to be checking something for you, helping you. Um, that is something that is a very good idea, depending on the kind of meaning, of course. Uh -huh. Perfect. Thank you. Number four, it says host a question and answer session. Uh, Suleyma Ivan. Not possible. Let's see, Jarvin Isaac. Okay, Fernando Gonzalez. Good, thank you. Okay, how's a question and answer session? When it comes to question, there is a no noticeable, noticeable, sorry, I don't know. Noticeable. Noticeable, okay. Noticeable, okay. When it comes to question, there is noticeable difference between presenting in person and presenting virtually. Alicia has observed that in person, questions tend to be meaningful and the answer usually apply to almost everyone. With digital anonymity, the audience tends to be asking questions that are more person specific. For example, they may ask for touch support or information they missed during a specific part of the presentation. To avoid significant interruptions, include a 10 to 15 minute question and answer session at the, at the end of every presentation. If the audience is small, take it one step further and offer video conferencing opportunities or content information like an email address to go over individual concerns. Okay, good. What do you get on this one? Uh, it's it's a really good part. Have a section of, of question and answer when it, you have a conference, a meeting in in the virtual forum uh, or a training, because during during the during the presentation, all the audience have some uh, some questions and doubts. And uh, this part is embraced with the with the before part of the chat chat. I think it's uh, number three. Teacher, what is number three? I'm sorry. The chat is related to the chat, right? Number three. Uh, number three. What do you mean? I don't get that one. No, this is number four. Host a question and answer session. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the other one was a chat moderator. Chat so moderator. it's going to be like, uh -huh. uh, either as somebody or you can have some questions sent to the chat. So it's going to be like that. And the number four is, yeah, as you said, I mean, uh, it's the most, uh -huh, it's related. I mean, and you will be able, this section, I mean, depends on the topic, depending on you. Um, myself, for example, I prefer you to ask questions in the moment, right? So you can, um, get everything clear but some people they said to you at the end of the presentation or at the end of each section we're going to check uh, questions if you have questions or i will be asking you if you have questions so and yeah. you can answer uh -huh. but it's it's common that uh is the audience is, is a great it's a big audience uh more than one people have the same doubt so is is this is the 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 need to be to be to have a chat moderator because this person can filter the, the 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 question, and after the presentation, uh, this question will be used in that part uh, question and answer session. That is so true. I mean, uh, there are a lot of companies or institutions that they use that one, and and, and just as you say, it's very useful. For example, I. I am part of the embassy, embassy, the U.S. embassy training department, and there they always have somebody like that. I mean, there are people that they are always asking questions in the chat, and then some at some point, 
uh, the person that is presenting, they stop, and then the person that is in the chat, they answer the questions and they filter them and they say, okay, this question will be answered in the next time, or uh, this one, the answer is for this and this and this, or two or three people have the same question that is about this. So that is going to be very useful. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. The next one says embrace interruptions and distractions. This is going to be for Heidi. Sure, teacher. Embrace interruptions and distractions, right? Yep. The opportunity you and your team have when presenting virtually is to share and showcase your humanity. Perfection isn't the goal when presenting to an audience. Connection is interruption and distractions are all part of life. For instance, dogs barking phone calls, children in the background or a doorbell ringing. These are distractions and interruptions everyone faces. Seeing someone embrace the more challenging aspects of daily life while presenting will encourage your audience to embrace who they are. As a result, they'll feel more connected to you. Good, what do you get in that one? The, when you got these interruptions or, or distractions, as it says, a uh, uh, doorbell or, or maybe a baby crying, uh, you realize that we are normal people and maybe that it makes us get closer. That is true. I mean, interruptions are not bad. I mean, of course, dogs barking, phone calls are some things that we do not expect, but we can make a joke and people can laugh, right? Or if somebody interrupts you and says something, of course, you need to address the question because everything is very important. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter the kind of question they have or the the kind of comment they have is very important to bring that one and of course get it part of the uh, of the presentation so definitely that is going to be a very good thing and depending on the presenter uh, the way that they are going to address this one is going to be very good or very bad good next one says have confidence this one is for roxana Sensio. Not possible. Let's check Marcus Ayala. Okay. Okay. Uh, have confidence. All of these live video presentation tips will help you create an interactive video presentation, but nothing will make you and your team more convincing or establish trust with an audience more than having confidence of video. If you want an audience to believe in your message, you have to be confident. Um, I, I don't know if it, I read the quotation. Yeah, yes. please, please. The quote, oh, no, oh, no. yeah, the quote. And focus on the value of what you are present, you're presenting instead of thinking about how you look on camera. Alicia Berruti Bonbon. Okay. <laughs> Having confidence on camera can be difficult for you and your team, especially if you aren't comfortable using video. So, what are some ways you can become more confident on camera? If you can watch yourself on camera without being critical, don't. Disengage with the negative voice in your mind. Focus on the value of what you're presenting. A step away from self-limiting belief. Okay, what you're do you looking... get in this? Okay, okay. That's all. That's all. Okay. Um, uh, it's important to to believe in what we are presenting and what we are talking about because if we are thinking about just and how the people see me see me in the in the stage or whole. Am I doing this 
on saying this part and trying to to all the things um if they if are going in a good way and maybe we hesitate on what we are saying uh, so it's important to be confident and believe in what we are saying and try to understand what we are presenting because we focus and transmit the message, not the, the way. If we think so, uh, we, will, we will have more confidence. We will be confident and, and the, the audience will be more engaged with the message. And they don't um, can see or, or or limits, for example, and so it's important to mm, practice, for example, um, in, a, in a miracle, try to talk with the miracle, present in front of miracle, for example, or in order to lose that, that, uh, uh, that fear, I don't know, if the, yeah. The fear, yeah. Here. Oh, sorry, I forget the word. So it's important to be confident too, in order to succeed on transmit our message. Okay, definitely. So yeah, you uh, you made a very nice wrap up. I mean, you need to be confident in you, right? And what you're gonna say and things like that. And of course, you need to be confident. You need to believe on the topic that you are presenting. So. Uh, in that way, everybody is going to also believe that one. And yeah, the other thing that you say is also important. Practice, right? In front of the mirror, record yourself. Many things you can do. Practice is very, very important. Nice. Very nice. So it says video presentation tips for pre-recorded presentations. So... Uh, you already have some fantastic video presentation techniques for live videos, but pre-recorded presentations can also be tough to master. So we're going to check about this one here. Create expectation. This is for everything, okay? Uh, let's see who has some read. Almost everybody has read at least once or twice. Erwin Lagos. Hi, teacher. Number seven, create expectation. Expectation, yes. Create expectations for your audience, be letting them who <clears throat> then now that you are going to talk about the have of time, left with the agenda agenda, the goals over that they can expect. Our agenda, what does 21 look like? Why video in yourselves? or how to add video in yourself. Tip, when creating expectation, this is to the, the, the malware <clears throat> of what's going to come later. Hint that something important, import your audience doesn't want to miss is going to be addressed, but don't enter it be the way that, that is that you're going to talk about. Very good, so what do you get in this one? And I think that uh, when you will, when you will begin a, a, a presentation, when you share your presentation, the presentation, sorry, um, first you have to be on time. This is the most important. For example, uh, my teacher in English all the time, yeah, on time, all the time is on time. And this is the, the first. And the second, I think that you have to present the agenda that you will you will explain in the class or in the in the in the presentation. You you do it, teacher. <clears throat> After that, uh, you can to think about how can I do for motivation that my audience. What can I do? For example, video video. For example, uh, picture. I think that is that meaning that 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 the words teacher. Okay, yeah, that is it. I mean, uh, yes, when you create expectation is whenever at the beginning of the 
uh, of the presentation, you explain, okay, we're gonna discuss about this and this and this. I need you to do this, or I need you to bring some things. Um, remember that we were discussing before that you need to send the agenda in advance, right? So you will know what is going to be this about. So uh, very good, that is it. Number eight says, don't depend on your deck. Uh, David Samuel. Okay. Don't depend on your deck. When you're reviewing your video presentation ideas, it's important to remember to leave room for personalizations. Reading from a deck of slides makes presentation feel robotic and does like to engage your viewers. If an audience can get everything they need from a slide deck with what value are you providing? Kevin says it's also essential to keep notes with talking points that aren't visible to your viewers. And while recording, span on those notes and the slide themselves. Doing this will add personality and some humanity to the presentations while still hitting those key points. And it will kill your presentation from feeling over rehearsal. Good. Yeah, what do you get on that one? Okay, uh, it is important that uh, we are talking about uh, this before in another class uh, that uh, you can uh, put some in your presentation, but you need to know more. You need to get more, you need to, to give more to the audience uh, that uh, will give you the, the, the connection with the people. If you only read, uh, the people read, and that will be so boring and uh, uh, difficult for the people to stay, to, to pay attention. But uh, you put some of important ideas and you talk more about that. You need to get some, some maybe some special notes or maybe some special information that you can use in your presentation to, to give a, a, a more a rich detail to all of the people that are in the, the meeting. Very good. So yeah, this is actually uh, what we have also discussed in the past, right? Um, yeah, you are going to create a PowerPoint presentation, but you don't have to depend only on that one. You need to go further, right? So it's what you are going to say there. That is like a guide for you to, to know what you're going to discuss. But other than that, is you the one that is going to show everything? Yeah, there are teacher, there are some 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 applications that they get all of your reading uh, and put it in in the in the in the notes, but it's different. This is a uh, use for some uh, uh, universities in a, uh, if you take course in uh, universities in the other countries, they give a, a explanation and uh, all of the script is uh, given to you, the, the, the speaker are talking and all of the, the what the speaker are saying is a, uh, the script is provided. The script is provided by the by the same application, and uh, like uh, some of uh, YouTube, when when you do the, the the subtitles, they generate automatically generate the subtitles. That, that there are some applications that do that, but it's different from, from this situation. Yeah, actually, that is true. So, uh, I mean, we need to take advantage of the technology, right? So uh, that is so true. You will be able to look for something. I mean, if you want to do anything, most likely there is an application already for that one. I mean, I mean, once I download an application that gets a noise like a vibration or anything like that, that is going to push away the mosquitoes. In my that one, that is crazy. So, I mean, for presentation, for business, you are going to find a lot of resources and it's a good idea for us to check into that. Okay, uh, be respectful of time. This is something that also we discussed, but anyways, we're gonna read. Uh, let's see. 
José Wilfredo Ayala. Not possible. Ileana Giselle. Sure, ah, okay, Wilfredo, let's do it. Yeah. Be respectful on time. It may be hard to get your point across in a limited amount of time, but your audience is busy and their time is valuable. Try to keep pre-recorded -pre pre presentations to an hour. Start by letting your view, your viewers know <clears throat> beforehand how long the presentation is going to take. Remind them that you know they're busy and, and acknowledge that their time is valuable. Then when you hit that respect to the time limit, it is important to grab at it. Okay, wrap, what up the, it up. wrap it up. Yeah, okay. wrap it up. And what do you get on that? Uh, maybe you need to to measure the time that the, your presentation will be because, as you know, that as I make a presentation of the time, the the time of the other uh, people is really important, and maybe they have uh, something to do. After your after your presentation, so you need to be careful uh, when you are prepared the topic because you need to be uh, mostly direct when you want to what the information that you want to share. That is true. So you need to be aware, right? Sometimes discussing a lot is not a good idea. It's better uh, to use the time wisely so you can impact the audience. So that is something very important. And of course, start on time and also finish on time. Good. Reject perfection, uh, Ileana Giselle. Okay, teacher. Reject perfection. One of the struggles of recording a presentation is the innate desire or perfection. The ability to start over because the presentation isn't live only amplifies this. Don't get caught up in perfection. Your good is good enough. Kevin Andrews, bomb, bomb client enable manager. Being your imperfect, authentic self and embracing tech problems or misspoken words can be thought tough when you can re-record, re when you can re-record. But welcoming these stumbles will keep your viewers interested in what you have to say. This is because you're showing up as a, as a vulnerable person with flaws and struggles like everyone else. Embracing these struggles helps your viewers identify with you on a deeper human level. Good, so what do you get on this one? Mm, that I think that always we can have troubles and when you have that feeling that it maybe can result wrong, that just makes you feel like, um, how do you say teacher? You feel anxious, yeah, right? Yeah, anxious, yeah. And that feeling uh, sometimes also can impact and with maybe you you can say I don't know say a word wrong or you forgot maybe your speech or the line of your speech. So when you forgot to 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 reach the perfection or that that the goal is the the presentation has to be perfect or the pre-record has must be perfect. When you forget forget that, maybe you can actual actual actually you can maybe also sounds like fluent and you connect with your with the people and at the end i like that part embracing these struggles help your viewers identify with you on a deeper human level so they saw you and they know that you are not perfect and when you reject that idea of the perfection maybe you can i don't know how do you say desenvolver or something uh, like that? Develop, you can say. Yeah, yeah. You can develop as who you are. And people 
can connect with you. Just be who you are and don't try to be perfect and try to be someone else that you're not. Very good. So yeah, actually this is a good one. I mean, this is uh, something that happens. I mean, whenever you are going to record a presentation and you have the time to record everything, a lot of people, they don't feel very well about their voice, the way they look, the illumination, the room, and they stop and then record again, or they sometimes they make a lot of recordings, but it's not necessary. As you say, connection is the more important. So that one is what you need to, to try to do, okay? And yeah, I mean, uh, maybe our voice is not what we would like to do, but I mean, other people might find it interesting. And uh, what we need to take care about is the words that we're gonna say, uh, the intonation, the rhythm, things like that one. So, uh, in well, in my opinion, this is something that we need to embrace, not only for presentation, but for everything, right? Nobody's perfect. We have our things, right? Our defects and uh, we need to work on them and explore the ones that are good for us. So that would be it. And I guess this is the last one. So uh, break it up. This is for Roxana Asensio. Not okay. okay. Yes, I'm here. Break it up, especially when you are pre recording a presentation. Breaking monitor is important. When your presentation is about last hour over, half break over. it half over, half over. Break it up with a brief summary of what you've already discussed. Discuss, and an overview of the remainder of the presentation. This can help bring back your be, be, be viewers, viewers. Viewers. Thank you. Viewers focus and reminder of the value. I know. Of the value of what's to come. The value of the what to come. Okay, what do you get on that one? Mm, maybe, let me see. Well, it's important to um, maybe like uh, checking when I, I understand that they was talking about the pre recording a presentation. So when you are a when you are working in a video previous to your presentation, right? Yeah, previous. Yeah, so this is pre recording. Yeah, uh, you record and then you send the uh -huh. video. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, it's important uh, checking that um, video because uh, maybe you can improve some points, some. Um, I don't know, maybe lights or a uh, concept and try to uh, transmit the ideas in the other, with other words. And it's important because that uh, video or that presentation is not only for you, it's for others. So imagine uh, you need to uh, sell a product, for example, and if you don't transmit the better idea for your product, you can sell your product. So it's in, it's like a little commercial in a TV in a TV, right? Uh, you need to uh, improve always your uh, presentation, your your commercials, your ideas, because uh, your maybe your main your main or, or your strong uh, in that way is your slogan but if you don't spend time in your slogan in your videos and you are always uh, trust me a uh, little bit but not 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 enough 
maybe you you will you will lose your your um, buyers so in that case that video is like that is the tools that you will to uh, use to get uh, viewers or get buyers or get audience but if you don't work on it in a better way you will lose Okay, very good. So yes, uh, it's important, as you say, to to move over, to remember, to focus on things. Uh, in this case, it was talking about breaking up, depending on the topic. Sometimes we are able to break uh, and stop and do a real uh, a little summary about what we said. So, okay, my friends, uh, this was the class of tonight about presentations online or video conferencing. Do you have any questions before we finish? Okay, so one more week to go, okay, and one more day. So that means that we have next week and then just Monday from the other week. So it's important to move on with the platform. So try to move on on that one. So we don't have to be the last day they're running, okay? And uh, we're going to check the attendance, of course. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Omaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Yanari Cortés Díaz. I'm here. Good. Suleyma Ivon Moreno de Hernandez. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Good. One of one of today is for Roberto Luis Umaña. And my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night, a very good weekend as well. Rest a lot and see you on Monday. Good night. Okay, good night. Good night, everybody. Have a nice weekend. Good night. Bye bye, teacher. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I hope your son gets better. Thank you. Hello, Raymond.